Welcome to the BI360 Cloud Reporting Webinar. Today we'll take you through a product overview of BI360 Cloud. Then we'll spend quite a bit of time on the demonstration. And then we'll come back to our slides here and talk about some of the facts behind BI360 Cloud. And then finally we'll talk about how to get started. So why consider a product like BI360 Cloud? Well, first of all, if you're already thinking about migrating to a cloud ERP system or you own a cloud ERP system, there's a pretty good chance that you also want very good financial and operational reporting in the cloud. Another reason could be that your IT department is working on strategies to move more and more of your applications to the cloud. And in that case, you probably want a reporting tool that both works in the cloud and on-premise so that you can start on-premise if you want to and move to the cloud when you're ready to. A third reason could be because you want to always be up to speed with the latest upgrades. In other words, with typical on-premise software, you get to upgrade whenever your IT department is ready for it. And with the cloud software, it's the vendor that upgrades you, so you will always have the benefits of the latest upgrades. The fourth reason could be to benefit from fre frequent feature releases. In other words, not just bug fixes that are done by the vendor in the cloud, but simply that they have new beneficial features that you can start using right away versus waiting for someone to upgrade you. So how does BI360 Cloud solve typical pain that you see around reporting? First of all, we've talked to a lot of companies over the last few years, and we've asked them what is the ideal scenario between where the power user is, the person that's designing reports, and the end users, the folks that are accessing reports. And it's been very easy to see the ideal solution. Everyone is using Excel for something. So it was very clear to us that the report design should happen in Excel. <clears throat> However, when you have a lot of end users, Excel is not really a great tool to share reports within or uh, to give people links to files on your server and so on. So then you want report access or call it distribution to happen within a web portal. And that's exactly what BI360 Cloud does in the cloud. So it gives you Excel for design for your power users, but with a couple of clicks, those reports you have built are now available for anyone, anywhere, in any location, at any time to be run in a very modern web portal interface. And we'll be showing you both of that today. Also, what's very important to solve the pain that we see almost everywhere today when it comes to reporting, um, the fact that data typically sits in many data sources, such as your ERP system, maybe your CRM system, maybe a point of sale system, maybe a payroll system. There's always many data sources. And the fact that usually each of them have a different report writer makes it very complex for a uh, report writer power user to combine all of it in an automated fashion. So having a data warehouse, and furthermore having a data warehouse now as an option in the cloud that can consolidate all of these different important data sources. That can make reporting so much easier because then you can use one single report writer to get to all of that data because it's sitting in one single database. So it's very easy for us to see that more and more companies, including in the lower end of the market and the mid market, want or need or are building data warehouses. In BI360, as you will see today, it's very, very easy to set up a data warehouse because it's already built. It's really just a configuration job. And that will make your reporting that much easier. 
And the last item I'll mention is cloud or on-premise. Well, that is your choice with BI360. It's been on-premise for almost eight years and in the cloud now for a few weeks since we launched it. And you can actually use it both on-premise and in the cloud at the same time. How is that possible? Well, if you have your ERP system locally still and you want to use our options for live reporting directly on your ERP database, let's say for your accountants, but at the same time, let's say your budget manager wants nothing to do with that and is ready for a cloud-based budgeting software, well, the Azure 60 could be used then both as a local installation and in the cloud. Or the other example of using it in the cloud could be for financial consolidations, where you might have several different ERP systems in different locations. So that gives you just some ideas around that. Now some general benefits when it comes to a cloud platform. Um, these are all very, very typical for most cloud-based systems, but I'll just mention three of these and I've underlined them for you here. Number one, of course, is you no longer have to worry about server hardware or server software, not buying it and not maintaining it because that's handled directly in our cloud by Solver and uh, you, you will never have to deal with that. Second thing is to have the benefit of new features and fast bug fixes. We mentioned that earlier, so we don't need to go more into that, but that's obviously a very, very good benefit for business users. And the final item I'll mention is automatic replication. So if it ever happens that there's a problem with your data or your server or there's a flood or there's a fire or any of those type of things, you can be sure that with the cloud solution that's appropriately set up and so on, you have very good disaster recovery. And the same goes for the i360 cloud. We have chosen Microsoft Azure as our cloud and uh, there are fantastic setups there to manage replication, for example, between physical different data centers so that your data is very safe. So let's talk a little bit more about what have been the premises for the creation of BI360 Cloud. What, what have we used as our guiding light to make sure that this is really taking reporting to the next level, not just moving an ordinary report writer from on-premise to the cloud, but really being a game changer compared to other alternatives available out there. So we focused on easy. Why? Because that's what the market has been telling us for a number of years now. They want easy. They don't want their reporting to be something that you need a PhD degree to perform. And they want it to be quick to get new employees up to speed but yet they want it to be flexible. So, easy installation. Why? Because there is no. It's already running in our cloud. Easy upgrades. We talked about that. There is none that you have to deal with because we have automatic upgrade systems in our multi-tenant cloud. Easy data loading. I'll be showing you uh, our new integration functionality that's sitting right inside of our cloud portal to make it easy for you to move data from your data source and into the BI360 cloud, either on demand or on the schedule. Easy data warehouse configuration. Uh, there, we have really done something very, very interesting. Our integration tool actually creates the modules and dimensions in the data warehouse automatically. And then you have an option if you want to go in and add logic to data like rollups and so on afterwards. So it doesn't get any easier than that to populate a cloud data warehouse. Easy report design. Of course, you've always benefited from the Excel interface for the power user that's building reports and uh, everything you bring with you knowledge of Excel already. And now with the cloud, we also have a new template system that we call QuickPack so that you can very quickly get up and running with some basic financial statements and file balances and such as soon as you loaded your data. Easy report editing. 
So if you want to make changes to a report that's sitting in the portal, with just one click, you can open that from the cloud into your local Excel, and then make the changes and then post it back to the cloud again. Very, very easy. Easy report sharing. We'll be showing you that today too. There's a new report archive function in the BI360 cloud that allows you to share reports without having to distribute them, let's say by email or to a SharePoint portal or some other way where you would try to make it easy for your users to access reports. Now that's just a built-in function right in the cloud so that you can post reports you've run into an archive where groups of other users based on security can read them. Easy analysis. Well, because within the archive that I just described, you have options to create playlists. Those are um, sets of reports chained together, just like a PowerPoint deck. Uh, and you have options to view multiple reports together on the same screen. Uh, so that makes it easy for your end users to do their analysis. Not, it's not just a list of reports they open and close. It's more than that. And finally, easy help. We have built in online help right in the cloud portal so that when you have a question, you can very quickly find help there. So before we go into the demonstration, let's talk about a couple of cloud facts. First of all, BI360 Cloud is a true multi-tenant application. As I talked about earlier, we have selected Microsoft Azure as our cloud for that. It is designed in something called HTML5, which is the way to go these days if you're building a web-based interface. And it works within any browser, even mobile devices, you can use to access BI360. It's using the best of both worlds, Excel for report design, and a very modern web portal for report management and access and so on. If you are still wanting a tool like BI360 to be on-premise for a while because you're not ready for the cloud, because maybe you still have your ERP on-premise and you prefer that the reporting is there, well, what you see today in the demonstration will become version 5.0 of BI360 on-premise. So today we're in version 4.7 and it will become version 5.0 in Q4 this year. Last slide before we go into the demonstration. At the bottom of the screen, you can see different data sources. One of them is probably what you think is the most important one, which is your ERP system. And then you might have other data sources, payroll, CRM, and so on, that maybe not right up front, but later you also want to collect data from and put into the BI360 cloud so that you can have uniform reporting in one location against all of that data. And that's how the data is collected and brought into the BI360 cloud. And that's how we're going to start our demonstration now, is to look at how we get BI360 cloud up and running load your data in, and then we'll look at report design, report management, and use of reports. So with that said, let's go right here. So what you see here is what we in the cloud world call a tenant. So in essence, if you imagine this is your company and you're now logging into the BI360 cloud, then you would have a uh, URL that Basically, it's a web address that you will have as a favorite in your browser or a link wherever you want that link. When you click on that, well, then you get to the login page. So we're going to log in. And when we log in, it takes you to a home page. Now, this home page, you can see we've tailored here just for demonstration purposes. But this home page, you can actually set to, let's say, your favorite report that you're always using or you can set it to be a link to your ERP system, if that is a web-based ERP system, or a third-party, let's say, a dashboard tool. So 
So you can use that to link to anything that's important for you to have available right next to or within the Azure Safety Cloud. The first thing we will talk about is how to get going. So let's imagine that the BI360 Cloud is brand new, you've just signed up, and the first thing you want to do is to populate it with data. So let's come right in here inside of the data warehouse to integration. So the very first thing you will do when the system is brand new is to come into the data warehouse to integrations and set up an integration. And you can see that uh, we've set up an example here. Uh, that can be any of the integrations we have, and we're going to talk more about the various integrations here in a second. Um, and we picked one of them, which happens to be Microsoft Dynamics 365 Financial. So that could be Intact, Acumatica, a number of other systems. Um, if you have multiple systems, or it's the very first time you log in, you're going to come here to add new, and it's going to take you to our connector marketplace. And this marketplace will be a vibrant location of new connectors. So every month or so, there will be new connectors to different interesting industry systems. Uh, and you can see many popular ERP systems on here already. You can also notice that there are um, three connectors that are not specific to a data source. Um, common separated files, so that could be any, any data that you export from, let's say, your on-premise ERP just to an Excel file that you want to quickly import. You can do that with our CSV file connector. Um, all generic old data, that's basically any system out there that has an old data interface or old data API, as people say. You can use that right now to load that data in. And there's also a SQL connector, so that lets you connect to any SQL server data source to load data into the BI360 cloud. And then these other ones with specific company logos, they are um, pre-built to make it a little quicker and easier for you directly to those specific systems. So you would select a connector here and then say, create, and I've already installed this, so I don't need to do that. And then you can go and configure which fields you want to pull in, and I'm going to show you that next. So let's use this connector that we've already set up right here, and let's just click Edit. So to make it a little faster for today, I've already set it up to load general ledger data, so dimensions and accounts. Let's look at the data here. So what you can see here is basically that we're in step two. Step one was just uh, the login information to connect to your data source. So whatever the login is for that data source, that, for example, that ERP system. And step two is the first task. You can see it's highlighted in blue up here. So this is basically a wizard to set up the integration. And Initially here you say, okay, I want to load GL data and what type of uh, update you want to do and the particular dimensions you want to be pulling from that data source, in this case, the GL data in this ERP system. So we've said here account, currency, department, company, all the ones you see with blue checkbox we've selected. And then the second step here within the task manager is essentially the most interesting screen, I think, which is where you see the data source on the left. Now, it says BI360 General Ledger. The reason it says that is that we went into the data source and we set up uh, an endpoint, as it's called in the old data world, uh, in the data source that provides us the general ledger data. This all depends on the data source you go after what that data source require on their side in order to expose the tables and fields that you want to pull into the Azure system. So this is basically looking into the general ledger in this data source we're looking at here. And you can see on the, the green dots, those are the um, fields in that ERP system that we have selected to bring with us in. 
And if you want to get the preview of that, I click on preview. So now it's basically pinging this ERP system and it's getting back a sample set of data. So it literally now went from the BI 360 cloud that we're in over into the cloud where the source ERP systems general ledger is sitting and it got us 200 records just to see what we had selected. And you see it in the format that it's sitting in, in that ERP system. For example, if you look at the posting date here, this is the posting date format in that ERP system. And notice it says year, month, day in there. If you close that, and now we look on the right side of the screen where I've now mapped the different fields you saw with green dots in the source ERP system by simply dragging them over to the right. I've mapped them to the dimensions that I want to use in the general ledger module in the BI360 cloud data warehouse simply by dragging and dropping. Sometimes, like the posting date field you saw, uh, I want to turn that into a format that is liked by the data warehouse, which is you know year, 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 month, month, day, day format. So I have a simple little Excel-like formula there uh, that turns that into this format. And how can I check if it looks good as it comes into the data warehouse? We can click a preview and it will run through that little mask there, and now it shows you the first 200 transactions, so exactly the ones you saw live from the ERP system, you now see them after um, they are converted into the format the data warehouse likes. And specifically, if you look at that period column, well, that is now the automatic conversion of that posting date, which you saw in a different format in the ERP system. So now it's the way it's going to look in the data warehouse. So these little preview buttons makes it very easy for you when you set up the integration the very first time here to view the data as it looks in the source and view the data as it looks after you've mapped it in here. Okay? And with that said, let's just come back here to the main menu. Let's say you've set up your integration, you've mapped the fields, and now you're ready to run it. Now you can run it with the run button you see up there. You can also run it automatically. So if you come down to jobs, you can see a couple of jobs that have been set up. A job is essentially scheduling. And you can set up jobs for anything. So you could say, load my sales data you know, every Saturday, load my general ledger data every hour. So different jobs can load data into the BI360 cloud at different points in time based on what's convenient and best for your end users. And if ever a job fails, let's say um, there was a bad connection into one of your data sources uh, or something like that, then you would quickly see it here. Plus, there can also be an email sent to the person in charge of, of making sure the cloud has the right data. So you see the status here. Now if I say edit on this first integration here, you can actually see the screen where you can set up uh, a name for that job, and you can set up the email notification we just talked about so that the person that uh, is in charge will get an email if there was ever a failure in loading the data. So jobs are basically automatic scheduling if you don't want to run an integration on demand. And both options are very useful. Finally, if we come back to the main menu, or up here to actually to the um, overview window. You can actually, after you have done your first data load from the very first time you set up the i360 cloud, you can see what that looks like in the warehouse. Because in the data warehouse has essentially created itself. And now this is my demo database. So I've set up uh, already quite a few uh, modules because I've loaded the data in from tables and receivables and sales and so on. But if you come down here to General Ledger, you can actually see that module in the warehouse, and you can see the dimensions that are used in that module. And that depends on the integration I just showed you, which dimensions get created here. One that should be very familiar to most people is the account dimension. So here you will actually see then the chart of accounts that you have loaded in. A very interesting thing 
with the BI 360 cloud is you don't just get the replication of the dimensions, such as accounts, that you're loading in from your source system, but you will also have plenty of attributes or fields like you see here that you can update directly in the warehouse if they don't exist in your data source. Now, what might these be used for? They can be used to group your accounts or companies or departments in different ways. That makes it easy for you to do reporting um, without having to specify, let's say, unique account ranges and so on. So attributes can be used to group and classify any of your dimensions to make your reporting as easy as possible. One last thing I will show you here of the data warehouse is the module schema. The module schema essentially is a window that you can use to view to see which dimensions are connected to which modules. So if you're not familiar with databases, well, dimensions would be things like account, department, company, like actual and budget versions of your data, time periods, customer, and so on. And modules would be your different data sets, your actual data, like tables, data receivables, data, general ledger data, and so on. So this module schema lets you very easily see which dimensions are used in what modules. And you see that with the green dot that tells you that the dimension is used in those modules. So it's a very slick way to see the whole data warehouse and exactly what's going on. That's all we'll talk about in terms of uh, initial setup of the BI-260 cloud. Hopefully what you've seen of this component of the demo is that this is very user-friendly. There's no programming here. And for the power user that have access to the data warehouse and also to administration, which is where you set up user security, it's all here within the portal interface. In the next portion of this demo, we are going to talk about how you set up reports and how you manage reports. And then in the final portion of the demo, we will talk about the archive, which you see up here, which is where you could have all of your end users that only need to view reports. So let's talk about managing reports and setting up reports. So that exists here under the menu that we call live reporting. With live, we mean that you can go and in interact with the data, you can run reports whenever you want, you can build new reports, and so on. First of all, if you look at the menu on the left, you can see that you have a few different types of filters. For example, under type, I can quickly say, show me only report packages, so that will be like books of many reports grouped together, or show me only individual reports, for example. Um, I can search for reports, so you see a lot of report examples sitting in here, so let me search for any report that has the word balance in it. And then very quickly you can see there are four different reports here in my demo system that has the word balance in the report title. My favorite is categories. Categories makes it very easy for you to manage reports and actually also to share reports with other power users. So once you've set up your folders here, for example, uh, accounting reports, sales reports, board reports, and so on, you can then create the, the categories, which are where it says financial statements, consolidation, and so on, within these folders. So now you have a very, very good hierarchical system to manage the different reports that you're putting in to the system. And if you notice this share button here, if I click the share button, once I've set up the system the way I like it as a power user, I can then, then say share this folder system with, let's say, all my department heads or the sales team or any other groups of users, we call them roles, that you set up for BI360 or individual users. So that way you do an initial setup and then you can share any of these categories with the right type of user. So they don't have to do the same setup themselves, yet they don't have to 
see all of these folders on their system because maybe all that they care about is sales reports. Okay? So let's run the report. Let's come in here. Let's say we want to see only our financial statements. And we see we have a few of them here. So let's first run the report that already exists in the system. So now it's opening up this report for us. And once it's opened up the report, then we'll see that we can go ahead and run those for different parameters. Running it for different parameters is the same as selecting a particular month or selecting a particular company or selecting a particular let's say budget version, and that is what you see here on the top. For example, if I want to run this for a different business unit that I have access to, I will be able to see, in this case, I have four companies in my system that I have access to, so I get to see those four on the selection list. Let's say we want to run this for the Canadian entity. And we can also change, of course, the period and any other parameters. So now we say run, and it's now running that in the cloud and is coming back with this report for my Canadian entity. Now I could go in and do some analysis as a power user here. I can right click on the number, I could drill down, I could print it, I could change the view. So if I don't want to see the Excel like row and column headers, I can remove them. Most people like to see them. I could also send this report to my archives. If I've closed the books and I'm now running different reports, making sure everything is looking good, I can say send this to archive and it's now going to put it into my archive up here. That's basically like filing away that report exactly the way it looks now for use later. I could also share this report with any of the groups of users that I've set up. Again, we call those roles. So let's say with all my department heads or maybe just a specific person, if it's more of an ad hoc exercise I'm doing right now, let's share it with that person. And what happens now is that that report, exactly the way it looks here, is going into Johnny End User's archive in his system. And afterward, we will log in as Johnny End User, and we should see that this uh, report ran for um, the Canadian office for July 2015 should sit in his archive. Let's close out of this report and let's talk about creating a new report. Now anytime you want, you could select a report and say edit and in that case you might make changes to the report and you will see it will open in your local Excel. But in this case, I want to make a new report and I want to make a new report based on the template. A template might be any set of pre-configured layouts that you have that has your organization's logo and those type of things. So I've made a few here. I have some generic templates. I have uh, some that are specific with the uh, trial balances and I have a profit and loss template. So let's take this template here and make a copy of it so that we can make a new report out of it. So we select it and we simply say duplicate. And then we'll give that a name. Let's call it a P&L report. And we say duplicate. So now it essentially copies that template so that I can build it out to a full-blown report. We can see there's my copy of the template. So I'm ready to now make a report out of it. So let's say edit. And now a little bit of magic happens. It takes this report template down from the cloud it opens my local Excel, and I can start working on that report. If this was the very first time you use BI 260 as a power user, it will actually prompt you and say, I don't see that you have the BI 260 Excel add-in installed. Do you want to install it? In other words, you can install this Excel add-in automatically the very first time that you create a new report. You don't have to go somewhere and find an installation file and then install it, it's automatically happening from the portal. Very, very easy. So here we are in Excel. You can see very easily that that's where we are. 
you can notice we have a VI360 menu now installed here. So that is essentially the Excel added. Now, because I'm using a template, there's already a basic layout in here. And I can put in, let's say, my header, like this. And I can put in my subheaders, like this. And let's say down here we want expenses. Of course, you can also copy any of these groups and paste them in and make you know many, many sections within your financial statement. But for today, we're just going to keep this very simple. You can actually note this in the template to make it very easy for more of a novice user. We even put in a little mini user manual down here. Of course, I can delete that once I'm done building the report. Now, we have to select which accounts we want, right? So in the revenue section, which accounts do you want? So now we can come in here to our layout editor, and we can do lookup. It's not getting those accounts, or essentially your shadow accounts, from the cloud. And remember, we talked earlier about how the cloud is populating from your ERP systems. You're not seeing your list of natural accounts from your ERP system, but it's coming from the VI260 cloud. And now we can go ahead and select our revenue accounts here and then come down to our expenses on row 13. And we can select our expense accounts. We're keeping this really simple and easy today, so we're selecting the whole range. Of course, you could be much more picky and unselect certain accounts in the range and have many groupings and so on. So let's go and test run that report. One of the really cool things is that you don't have to now upload the report to the cloud again to see if it's showing the right data and if you're happy with it. You can actually test that right here from Excel, even though you're sitting locally on your machine. So let's pick a period like March 2015 and say run. So now it's running for my US company for March 2015. And it's got this data from the cloud and it popped straight into your local Excel. So this is a great way to test the report out to make sure it looks the way you want before you publish the report template up to the cloud. You can even use the drill down, see it's right here, from Excel, just like you can in the cloud. And all of your data is sitting in the cloud. So let's say we're happy with this report. So we say, this looks good. Now we want to publish this template up to the cloud so all our end users can run it there and it can be nicely organized. So we can go up to the Save button right here and hit Save. Note this is no local saving of the report on my computer or on my network that I have to deal with. It just saves it right up to the cloud. No local file whatsoever. So now we can close Excel, return to the cloud. And there's our report. Now if we flip that around very quickly, we can see information when it was created, and so on and so on. And if you notice that little flag, that's very important. It says draft. Draft means that there's nobody else that can see this report right now. That would be bad because maybe it's still not the correct report or the final version of it that I want to share with other users. So it's only me that can see it now. So that gives you great control. So let's run that report. So we can change the parameters if you want to, but we'll leave it the way they are, and we'll say run. So now it's running. We should see exactly the same report that we saw locally in Excel when we built this and tested it out there. With all of the Excel formatting, sitting in there and if it looked pretty in Excel, it should look pretty here. Let's say we're happy with this. First of all, I can hit publish. So that will remove that draft status so that it's not published. It means it's available to anyone else that have a license to run live reports here in the BIG64. I could also share this report let's say with Johnny end user or a group of users so that they get to see this particular report 
that I ran for my US company for March 2015. Okay? We'll close out of there. Let me show you one more feature. Actually, two more features. So we got our report that we just created here. We see the draft status flag is gone. It's not available for to be run by any other user. Of course, based on their security rights, they can only run it for business units and such that they've been set up with access to. But let's now say we want this report to show up with the other reports that was in our financial statements category here under accounting reports. How do I do that? Very simple. You select the report. You click categorize. And now you see all the exact same folders you saw on the left side. So you click and you say it should be in that folder. If a report, if it makes sense that the report should be located in different, many different folders, you can select as many folders as you want and the report will show up there. It still only exists once in the back end here. You're not copying it. So now it should show up in my financial statement folder. And yeah, there it is. Now let's say that I would like to make a report package. Essentially, a set of reports that run together whenever I want to run them. So I want this report to be in the same report package as the uh, PL modern report. And let's say the balance sheet. So I select those three and I say add to package. Already had one report package. I'm going to make another one. And we'll call this monthly report book. All right? So one-time setup, these report definitions or templates will now always be able to be run together. Now, how do I know which report packages I have? If you remember in the beginning of the presentation here of live reporting, I talked about types. And I showed you that there were one report package in there already, this one. And now we created the second one. Now, this has never been run before, this report package. So let's run it once. Click Run. And it's now running all of the reports we selected for that package, not just one. So you can easily see the benefit of this is whenever you're going to run many reports, many different reports together, you can do that automatically like this. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can now see First of all, this is the report we created together. And you can see it's created my P&L report on the second tab. And then the balance sheet, we can see there. So it truly made a report book with just a few clicks there. And now these will always run together, regardless of what month or company and so on you run for. Doesn't get a lot easier than that. With that said, the last thing that I wanted to mention for you is the help file before we show you how it is to be an end user. So if you notice here on top of the screen, you have a couple of buttons, feedback and help. Feedback is actually to instantly give us feedback on something in the system. Maybe you have a suggestion about something we can improve in the software and so on. So you can Put that in here, and the email goes directly to our development team. So this is essentially product feedback directly from customers and partners to our development team. One click away. In terms of help, if you click the help, it will take you directly to the portion of the online help that is for this location that you're in inside of our web portal. So we're in live reporting, and it immediately takes you there where you have help on the different items. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to wrap up the actual demonstration portion of our demo by talking about true end users that are only going to use reports that you've published to them. So if we log out, we're back here at our login. Imagine now that what you saw was something that would be a power user on the finance team, or maybe any number of power users that should have access to build reports, run their own reports, and so on. Now we're going to be a true end user, like a department head. So we have Johnny end user that we talked about earlier, and he's now logging in to the portal. 
to look and see if there's any new reports that you have made available for it. Notice on the left side, Johnny M. User, in this case, only have access to the archive. He cannot see the data warehouse, he cannot see live reporting. If you use the budgeting module in BI360 Cloud, which is not really the topic of today, but uh, it's something that we're launching in the next uh, 60 to 65 days, so late this summer, well then he would see the budgeting folder if he had access to it. So basically user security controls what you can see on the menu. So it's very, very simple. Another point is that we made the pricing for these end users very, very low so that we can encourage customers to eliminate manual report distribution processes and just use the archive to get reports to their users. So we can see that Johnny end user, when he comes in, he pretty much sees what looks like an inbox for email. Reports that are in bold have not yet been viewed by Johnny, and reports that are not in bold is looked at before. If you remember that we ran um, this and shared this report earlier, well then we can come in and take a look at that report. We select it and we say open. And now that report pops up on the screen. So that's the one that we built together and we shared with Johnny and he can now see it. No execution time, it immediately comes up because it was published by that power user that shared it. Now Johnny can still right click and drill down on the report if you want to do that. He can print and it will be very good format on the printing. Most browser tools are not very good at printing good looking reports, but here it actually remembers the original settings that you created, let's say with fit to page and so on, when you design the report in Excel, it also actually remember, even though you're printing from a web page here in the browser. So you can go in, you can look at one report, notice now that report is red, you can also look at several reports. So let's say that Johnny wants to look at this new P&L. Remember, we also published that earlier. And at the same time, he wants to look at detailed sales as he's analyzing the revenues at the account level in the P&L. So he wants to open two reports at the same time. Now, maybe you're lucky and you've got two nice big monitors uh, on your office desk, and you can put one report on each but maybe you don't, or maybe it's faster just to do what I'm doing here. You select these two reports, and you say open. What did it do here? Well, it opened the P&L report here on the top, as you can see, and it opened the sales report here at the bottom, as you can see. And if I'm now analyzing my product revenues and I want to see which salespeople were selling the most of my products, well, then I can look here at the bottom and I get a very, very good idea of that, including graphically because I built the report using charts as well. So this way you can analyze, let's say, a balance sheet and a cash flow statement right next to each other or any type of reports that makes sense. And this gives you a very good idea too why we're putting so much emphasis on the power of the fact that the BI360 cloud has a real data warehouse under it that can be so much more than your financial data, including sub-ledger data and so on, because now you have the same report writer, the same web portal to use to build all of your different reports so that the user experience can be exactly like you see here that the user in one single location can look at data that normally would be a different report writer, a different interface, different security, is all now sitting in one place so they can do quick, efficient analysis so that their decision making can be optimal. And that should mean quite a bit to your bottom line and in general, return on investment on a tool like this. The last thing I'll show you is playlist. Let's say Johnny is going in to do a presentation for a group of um, executives, for example, and he doesn't want to spend a lot of time building a PowerPoint presentation. 
he wants to just present directly from here, but he doesn't want to go in and out of different reports here. So what can he do? Well, just like you might have heard from different online music services or you know, movie streaming services, you can make playlists. Playlists are essentially a select list of reports, in this case, that you want to see together. And you can make your own playlist very, very easily by simply selecting reports here and saying add to playlist. Okay. Now I already have a couple of playlists here. So let's take a look at one of them. I made one called monthly analysis. So that would be specifically the reports that this person wants to go and either analyze him or herself, or in the case of Johnny end user here, he's going to do a presentation tomorrow for a group of users, and he wants these four specific reports to be in the presentation. So they're here, and all he has to do tomorrow, come in here and say show playlist. And now this acts just like you would be used to from a PowerPoint presentation, that you have your different slides, if you want to call them that. So we can see the balance sheet. And let's say next, Johnny wants to go to the cash flow report. And next, he wants to go to the sales report. And even nicer than PowerPoint, here it can be much more than the screen because you can scroll. And next, he wants to go into profit and loss report. And when he's done with his presentation, he can just close this down, and he's right back here. The final thing is that if there's a lot of reports that are, let's say, my favorite report that has just been run for different months, different departments, how can I quickly see this in a different way? Well, I can switch the view like this, and I can see each individual report type. There's the one that we built early on, uh, and I can see all of the different times or rather the dimensions, like different companies and periods that that has been run for. Of course, that are accessible in my archive. So these are things that have been shared with me specifically. And um, we can open any of them. So it's just a different way to sort the same view to make it very easy for your end users to get to what they want. With that said, let's return back and summarize up in our presentation. So what you saw today was the BI360 Cloud Reporting Module. As I mentioned briefly a few min minutes ago, we're also launching the BI360 Cloud Budgeting Module here shortly, in a couple of months. And if you know BI360, the on-premise version, you know there's already budgeting there. So this is really just getting the same module up to this cloud interface that you saw. So that's available shortly, and then you will have reporting and budgeting in this same modern, very awesome interface. And then towards the end of the year, for those that want simple, basic, nice dashboards right within the portal without having to go to another dashboard tool, they can then also use the BI360 Cloud dashboards. If you have already invested in a full-blown visualization and dashboard tool, keep in mind what I mentioned earlier, that you can bolt that right into our main menu so that it sits with, uh, in BI360 Cloud with its interface. Very, very easy to do so that you can pick the best of both worlds if that's what fits your organization. Very briefly on integrations. We touched on that earlier when I showed you the interface in the web portal. So right off the bat here, as we now launched BI360 Cloud, you can see that there are a number of integrations right out of the box. For those of you that have systems that might not be on this list, uh, again, I want to highlight the CSV connector. So that would be for any system where you're happy for now just exporting a file and importing it to the cloud. Our generic old data connector. So any system that's using old data as its interface, and that tends to be more and more certainly cloud-based systems, but also some on-premise systems, you can then use that interface and our generic old data connector, and that's available today to load data. 
Also, we're building additional connectors that makes it quick and easy for you to load the data into the cloud for systems like Dynamics GPSL and so on, so you don't have to go through, let's say, the file-based connector, and that it's very much pre-set up for you. And those are coming very soon. You see they are in our second wave here um, for the cloud. And that also includes uh, systems like SAP Business One, NetSuite, and such. So finally, how do you get started? Well, if you have any questions about what you saw today, I encourage you to contact your BI360 partner, or if you don't have a BI360 partner, contact Solver directly. And you can see our information email here, info at solverglobal.com. So just use that to contact us and uh, we can take care of you. If your only interest is in BI360 on-premise for now, I've mentioned that a few times. We've been on-premise for almost eight years. So we have a great uh, BI360 solution for that. It's actually the same reporting engine that you saw in the cloud. If you only care about BI360 cloud, well, that's all that you saw today. So that's ready for you. If you want to start on-premise and then move to the cloud, maybe when you're moving your ERP to the cloud later, that's okay as well. You can start with BI360 on-premise installation and then move to the cloud later, or actually use both if that makes sense to you at the same time. Also want to remind you, if you're planning to become a partner or customer, that we have our annual user conference this fall, and that might be a great place for you to learn a lot more about the product and meet other customers and so on. And there's more information about that on our website. With that, I want to thank you very much for attending today and have a great day.